Good afternoon, lovely people. <laughs> it's cold. How are you all? I hope you're well. Goodness me. Um, these bright days that we're having at the moment, they're wonderful, a wonderful change from all that sort of grey and dark. But of course, without any cloud cover, it doesn't keep any warmth in. And every now and again, the sun disappears, and by Jiminy, it ain't half chilly. Oh, it's very bracing. What's lovely today is seeing friends, seeing friends again. Uh, everyone's finished being sort of tucked up for Christmas and New Year, and gradually folk are starting to come back to their gardens with their Christmas presents, spades, etc. So lovely. Um, so yes, I've been hanging around and chatting, which is lovely. But I think we're going to rattle through this little list or chat now <laughs> and then I need to do something, I really need to do something either in the garden or get myself back home. So the subject for today is how to plan the kitchen garden for year round food production. It's one of the questions I get asked, I think it's probably the most frequently asked question apart from are the cats yours? Do the cats live in the garden? No and no, the cats live in houses either side of the garden. So in terms, uh, so the other thing I'm frequently asked is how many plants of each plant do I plant in order to have enough to keep me going for the year? And how do I know, hello buddy, how do I know how many plants of each plant to plant? So let me try and break this down a little bit for you and also just talk through my plan for the garden for this year. <clears throat> so I think the first thing to say is, especially if you've never grown a vegetable garden before, if this is your first year, um, the first thing to ask yourself is what do you like to eat? because there's no point in growing the stuff if you're not going to eat it, if you're not going to enjoy it. So, what do you like to eat? Um, secondly, ask yourself, what do you eat most of? So, for example, if you like tomatoes, but you don't eat many of them, that's a consideration. You might want to grow some, but not too many. Think about things like what is expensive to buy if you're having to buy it from the shops and I think a great example of that is bagged salad leaves how much do they cost in the shops now I'm not sure maybe a pound a pound fifty for a bag of salad leaves which then turn to sludge in two days that's you know in terms of weight of produce that's a lot of money for just a few leaves isn't it when Actually, leaves are really relatively simple to grow. So that's kind of how I started in the very first instance with my garden, thinking about what do I want to eat? What do I like to eat? What do I like to eat a lot of? What do I want to eat from my garden? And then it made sense to me to grow the things which are the most expensive in the shop, so that if I can't grow everything that I possibly need, at least if I'm still having to buy stuff, it's the cheaper stuff. So, um, for example, hmm, I don't grow masses of potatoes. I really like them. I do like them. If I could never have a potato again, I wouldn't mind too much. I do quite like chips. Um, so I don't give them a huge amount of space in my garden. If as a family you eat loads of them, you might think, well, we'd like to grow more potatoes than anything else. But bear in mind that actually potatoes are quite cheap. So if you're limited with space, maybe don't do the potatoes, do the things which cost more. I'm going to take my hat off, actually, and just put my hat up. Because <laughs> the thing about wearing a hat, oh, it's going to be chilly, is I can't, I can't myself speaking I can't hear whether I'm too loud or not Ooh. anyway so um, <clears throat> and then folks say to me how many how do you decide how many of each plant 
to have that comes just with a bit of sort of trial and error really so it took me about two or three years to work out that 32 tomato plants is enough for me to live on for a whole year a few fresh but mostly bottled stored what have you i'm a family of one <laughs> occasionally i feed other people but generally speaking i'm a family of one you know if you're a family of four and you eat tons of tomatoes too you may find that you need to grow a hundred plants in terms of being really specific about how many of each plant to grow the answer is I can't give you the answer because your family's requirements will be different to mine your land will be different to mine you know it may be richer in some nutrients than others and what have you give it a go give it a go that's the main thing <coughs> I do try to cram quite a lot into my space and I think a couple of my biggest tips for anyone, uh, especially if you've only got a small space, is think about... So my two top tips for a small space garden. One is think about vegetables which you can use as a cut and come again vegetable. In other words, when you're harvesting it, you don't destroy the whole plant. For example, uh, if I was harvesting, I can't think now because I tend to do so much cut and come again. So for example, say with lettuce leaves, I never take the whole head of lettuce out. I always only ever take two or three leaves from each one, keeps growing, keeps growing. The Cavallonero, there was a good example from the other day. The celery, it's a cut and come again veg. So for a small space, I can have a few plants which just keep giving and giving and giving. The other thing I'm a fan of, as anyone who's watched me for a while will know, is I like a bit of vertical gardening. That, that footprint for a vertical plant is so much smaller than the footprint for a sprawling plant. So, you know, think beans. Beans are great. Grow, grow climbing beans, say, as opposed to bush beans. So that's all to do with sort of space, doing what you like. I've made some notes, I'm just going to um, check, I'm not forgetting anything. Um, <clears throat> obviously you have to consider what suits your climate. If you're like me in a zone 8, 9, you can sort of copy what I do because you've got the same sort of climate. But the other thing to think about... Um, <clears throat> Don't get too hung up on it this year if this is your first year. You, you, you know, in time you'll find this rhythm through the year. But even though it's January at the moment, I'm already thinking about next winter, next January. I try to garden because my climate allows it. I try to garden right through the year so that I don't have, say, a big harvest in September and then the garden's finished, or a big harvest in October and then the garden's finished. And whether I, whatever I've managed to get by September, October, I then have to live on all of that right through till next May before the first of the new plants are ready to eat. Because that's a long time, isn't it? You know, six months with nothing fresh to eat. So as you're making your plan now, think about next winter as well <clears throat> so you'll be thinking about brassicas all the brassica family and to help you plan that as you're sitting with your seed packets hopefully you've got your seeds by now or at least some idea of it or your books if you're using books to help you plan think about the things you're going to be growing and look on the packet or in your book and look to see when the harvest time is so if whatever it is you're growing if it says you know harvest from june harvest from july you can think to yourself ah okay well if that's going to be coming out in july or the beginning of august i could put something else in that same bed to then carry me through to the winter for example your brassicas so it's always about kind of you looking as far forward as possible and then sort of tracing your steps back so that 
in the spring when you're sowing your tomatoes and all these other things, you'll also be thinking about sowing some winter greens. I know it's bonkers, isn't it? Thinking about the winter when you're sowing your spring stuff. <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, think really far forward and then come back in little steps. <laughs> uh, think about when beds will be empty, etc, etc. Something else you'll hear people talk about a lot is crop rotation. Again, don't get too hung up about it. Uh, that's something you can explore further down the line. The main thing for now is just get growing. Get going and get growing. My plan for the garden is always based on, I have a four year rotation because I've got my four main beds, each subdivided into five smaller beds. And quite simply, all I do each year is hop the plants over into the next bed. So bed number one whoosh, goes all the way down to bed number four, bed four into bed three, bed three into bed two, bed two into bed one. So actually it makes planning quite a bit easier for me. I've got my, I've done my first rough sketch, which I'll show you in a second and talk you through. Um, so it stays fairly, fairly, pretty much the same from year to year. There are small changes each year, and this is again back to something I was mentioning, was it in the tour, we were looking at the broad beans, saying this thing of how we're, we, you know, we're constantly, constantly observing what's going on in the garden, continually looking at this works well, this doesn't work so well, this worked really well, I wonder why, is there a reason it worked well? And as we make those observations each year, and they, they get stored somewhere in the back here. And then in the following year, we may, ha we may have already made our plan, but then we think, oh, but actually, that seemed to work better by doing it a slightly different way. So my, although my four bed rotation is pretty much the same each year, there are usually little tweaks here and there. Don't be afraid to tweak. <clears throat> the other thing I recommend is a little garden notebook. Now, um, oh God, I'm getting shaky, shivery. So, for example, it's really very, very simple. This was my plan for 2020 for last year. Is that going to? Oh, hang on, light. There we go. So that represents my four big beds, and then you can see each bed is divided into the five smaller beds. This represents the bean arches which go across the paths. Again, making the most of the space. The wasted space between the rows is my path. Great. <clears throat> and literally all I do in this notebook, which I've had now for oh, all sorts of bits of paper falling out, bear with me. What's the first year in this notebook? Um, Sorry, bear with me, bear with me. This was 2014. Very, very, very rough plan. So you can see, this is six years, and it's only, it's only that many pages. Really, really simple notes. I make a note of when I've sewed something and where. So I've got a column for indoor sewing, cold frame sewing, and direct in the bed sewing. So I make a note of when I sewed it and where, because that gives me clues later on about the conditions that it had when it was sewn. Do I need to change something? So when and where it was sewed, when it germinated, and when and where its next step was, as in, was it something I sewed at home that then came to the cold frame, or was it sewn at home and went direct into one of the beds? Was it sewn on the deck and then put directly into the beds? <clears throat> That's it. The simplest of simple notes. Usually, it's 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 literally a date in a column and the name of the seed. <clears throat> the reason I do that, <clears throat> again, it's going back to this kind of observation thing. Is from year to year, I can look back at my notes, having had the experience of of seeing it happening in front of my very eyes. And I can think to myself, um, such and such a plant 
maybe something I've sewn indoors. It was ready to go out in the middle of May, but it was too cold for it to go out in the middle of May. So then the following year I can think, okay, I'll sew it two weeks later so that hopefully when it's ready, it'll be ready to go out in June. Another example of that is, as I said, back in 2020, I had so many beautiful cucumbers, gorgeous, but they came weeks ahead of my tomatoes and I really want them together for my Greek salad. So again, this isn't something you'll necessarily get right straight away, but if you keep your notes and you keep observing what happens in the garden, the following year you can make an adjustment until hopefully you can get it spot on. But of course, weather may dictate, but <coughs> based on seeing my cucumber harvest last year and then the tomatoes, I'm going to start my cucumbers, I think, I will double check, but I think either three or four weeks later this year, so that hopefully at the point when they're fruiting, so are the tomatoes, so I can enjoy them together. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> One of the things that also helps me to do all this, um, I've mentioned before I'm quite visual, is with my little sketch plan, this is my plan for this year, it's not even in my oh, notebook yet, um, here's my faithful clipboard, literally a piece of paper on the clipboard, pen in hand, and I do it out in the garden. It just helps me have that sense of, I can visualise where something was last year, so I want to move it to this year. I can also visualise how well last year's crops did, do I want to tweak something? So for instance, this year, <clears throat> going back to last year, sorry, I've always grown my cucumbers in a row up a frame, quite vertical, and then in front of them, a row of orange bell peppers. Now last year, my paprika peppers did really well, and I planted them in a block. I'd always read, always heard that peppers like to be grown together, they did really well. The orange bell didn't do so well. So I'm thinking, hmm, perhaps instead of growing them in a line, I need to grow them in a block. So that will dictate that, it's gonna be hard to see, isn't it? Instead of having a whole row of cukes with orange bell in front, I'll squish the cuke frame up a bit and then do a block of orange bell in the end. Um, Otherwise, the like I say, from year to year, the plan doesn't change very much. If I want to try something new, great. I do quite like trying new things each year. But I think I'm at the stage this year, <clears throat> I say that I have got a couple of new things to try, where I kind of know what my garden will do for me in terms of space, yield, etc., I found over the last five or six years, I found varieties which work really well for me, both in terms of taste, really important, but also yield. I'm always looking for that bigger yield. So I'm kind of happy to stick with, with what I've been doing for the last couple of years in terms of varieties. <coughs> Excuse me, the cauliflowers last year, scrap of it left this year um, they were spare seedlings from a friend which I said yes please to the only reason being that bed was supposed to be broad beans the broad beans failed because of the mice so I had the space otherwise I wouldn't be doing cauliflower because they really need a good couple of feet of space each which when those seedlings were made available to me I would not have had well, I'm hoping I won't have this year because I hope all those broad beans will do really, really well for me. Um, it can it can all seem, I realise this is quite a wordy vid and I'm, I'm trying to help but I might be confusing more than anything. Let's simplify things. What do you like to eat? What's expensive? Go for those kind of things if they suit your climate. <clears throat> 
Um, if if you're newish to a plot, ask around, ask your plot neighbours. Are there things which really don't grow well on this site? You know, some sites have issues with garlic and onions. <clears throat> you know, ask around. Decide what you want to eat. Get into your plot. Decide what it is that you want to eat, want to grow. Look at the seed packets or books. Get a basic idea for spacing because it will usually say things like you know so 20 centimeters apart you can make a little note in your notebook of that rather than taking all your seed packets to the garden if you've got a few notes about the spacing then get out into your garden get onto your plot measure it you know you might need uh to get help from a friend socially distance with a tape measure actually measure out your plot so you can work out, ah, oh, this size of bed will take six tomato plants. When you're doing your seed sowing, sow a couple of extras, just in case. Uh, then if everything works really well and you've got spares, brilliant, give them away. But sorry, back to the planning. You could do a couple of things in terms of with your seeds and your sowing. Um, Paul has a lovely system where he's got a... Um, an old box, Bertie the box, like a sort of big shoe box, and it's divided into the months. So he literally puts all the packets into each different month in the order of the months that they need to be sewn in. That can be really useful. Uh, and yeah, I think the main thing is, well, the main thing is just get, get something in the ground, have a go. If you're creating brand new beds for the first time, uh, think about the size of them in terms of reaching into the middle. I think folk reckon that about one metre twenty wide is the widest we want to go with our beds because of getting into the middle. How how long you want to have them, it's entirely up to you. I know a few folk have kind of copied my four bed system just because it makes it easier to manage in terms of thinking about the crop rotation and it just it's just more manageable. Um has that been called for a cup of tea? <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. What do you want to eat? What's expensive in the shops? What will grow in your climate? How much space have you got? Maybe start really simple. Maybe start with 10, 12 different types of vegetables. Get them in. Uh, see how you do this year. Keep notes. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get sowing seeds yet, as I mentioned in the video the other day. Turning the alarm clock off, that's telling me to shut up speaking. Uh, yeah, don't be in too much of a hurry to get sowing. The main thing at the moment is, is get the shape of your beds sorted. Get, get perennial weeds out of your beds. And that back to that age old question of how many plants of each type of vegetable do I need to grow to feed my family of four? You will work that out in time. Oh, that's the other thing you could do with your notebook in your note. Where's my notebook gone? As I've done in my notebook in previous years. It's towards the back, I'll show you. <clears throat> oh, I did it for last 2019. I don't think I'd be able to make that out various different veg and each time I harvest I write down the weight of my harvest so that's something else you could think about doing if it's if it's the first time for you every time you pick weigh it make a note of it hang on just a tick oh, sorry about that oh my goodness one of those days lots of folks around today which is lovely yes so I'm not going to go on any longer <clears throat> I've probably rambled more than enough probably confused everyone <laughs> more than I meant to uh, so, get yourselves a notebook, make a note of when you've sewn things and where you've sewn them and when they've gone out and where they've gone out. Get into the garden today or whenever it is you can. Measure out your space. How much space have you got to play with? Sit with your seed packets. Let the seed packets tell you how much space they need. Have a look at when they're going to be harvested. If they're going to be harvested earlier in the year than say September, October, can you put something else in straight after them like brassicas? If so, 
do you have some brassica seeds? It's not too late to think about getting your seeds. Have fun with it. Just the main thing is just get out there and get something in the ground. And if it is your first year, it is not going to be perfect this year. You will get to the end of this year, I promise you, you'll get to the end of this year and you'll say to yourself, oh, I wish we'd done this or I wish we'd done that. That is the beautiful thing about having a vegetable garden is there's always next year to do something differently, to do it better. You might do it better that year and then in the third year it's rubbish because of the weather, whatever it is. But yeah, don't expect perfection because um, you won't get it. <laughs> You'll just be disappointed if you want perfection. Just get out there, have fun with it. Put seeds in the dirt, right? <laughs> it's freezing. I'm going to go. I've got a ton of tidying up to do. That'll warm me up a bit. So I will see you again really soon, I hope. And then the next time I see you, hopefully we'll actually be out in the garden doing something instead of me just sitting here talking at you but I hope that's helped a little bit maybe I should have said at the beginning sit and make notes as I'm burbling because I'm going to say a lot right yes I can talk for England all right my lovelies I will see you again really really soon but until then cheerio um and have fun daydreaming and planning your garden and just to say very very quickly before we do go Remember what I was saying in the January seed sowing video, I think it was. We've got these three months in this climate, we've got three months before anything really, really kicks off in the garden. We will do some sowings, a few indoors, we've done a few in the cold frame. But for the most part, we've got these three months now for planning. So use the time to do your planning, your seed finding, and designing your beds, laying out your beds, digging out your new beds or no digging your new beds, however it is you're going to do it. Make the most of these three months now if you're planning. Because once we get into April, before you know it, it'll be September and we'll be like, ooh, the year's over. It really will come quickly. And once we hit April, every day is going to be a bonkers day in the garden. Yeah, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. All right, lovelies, see you soon. Until then, please look after yourselves. Happy daydreaming. <laughs>